Li Qingyun was allegedly born in 1677. However, Qingyun's own testimony varied, and sometimes he gave his birth date as 1736. He said that he spent most of his life in the mountains, gathering medicinal herbs and practicing Qigong. In 1749, Li Qingyun, who, according to sources, was by then 72 years old, entered the court of the Lord of Kaysan County, where he was hired as a martial arts teacher and a specialist in tactics. Qingyun's biography can be traced fairly well through the documents. At least the archives contain evidence that the imperial government congratulated the eternal herbalist on his 100th, 150th, and 200th birthdays. In 1908, Li and his disciple Yan Hushuan published the book Secrets of Immortality Li Qingyun. In 1927, General Yensen invited Qingyun to Wanzhou, where the only known photograph of Li with the healing root in his hands was taken. The herbalist, who lived more than 250 years, died either in 1928 or 1933. At least the Western press attributed his death to May 1933. Monk Abel There's almost no information about this man, but it was he who had dozens of prophecies, most of which came true. World Wars, the fall of the monarchy in Russia, the appearance of flying and underwater vehicles, all this he predicted with amazing accuracy. People with a true gift usually do not tend to flaunt it. That is why there is no documentation where Abel is mentioned, except for the case in the Ministry of Justice, which was filed against him allegedly for the dissemination of prophecies. What actually happened, history is silent. The Church does not take a very favorable view of this monk. Some Orthodox commentators condemn him for equating Nicholas II with Jesus. There is allegorical and figurative in this. He meant that the last Tsar will receive a martyr's death and it will entail a whirlpool of global events, like the death of Christ. Now it is quite difficult to separate Abel's actual predictions from the false ones that have appeared in large numbers since his departure. Charles Hatfield was the man who sold rain. At the end of the 19th century, farmers were among the richest people in the United States. In times of harvest their profits could reach several thousand dollars, in times of drought they lost everything. One day the farmers had a savior. His name was Charles Hatfield, a man who caused and sold rain. At the beginning of his career of the century, Hatfield drove around the states pitching sewing machines and made $125 a month doing it. Along the way he studied meteorology, physics, chemistry, bought chemical reagents and conducted experiments. He dreamed of making rain artificially. In 1902, he finally obtained a secret mixture of 23 chemicals that caused precipitation in the form of rain. At first he made ordinary bets. Eventually Hatfield began selling rain for money. Each time his powder miraculously worked. His fame grew. Henceforth he was making contracts worth thousands of dollars. In 1928, Hatfield filled Big Bear Lake, California, with rainwater, and a year later he extinguished a fire in Honduras. But he had his setbacks, too. On January 5th, the heat-dried town of Hatfield was hit by a downpour that lasted more than two weeks. Both the reservoir and the dried-up river beds filled up. Water burst its banks, destroyed bridges and railroads, and flooded homes and farms. The damage amounted to more than $3 million. The authorities sued him for damages instead of the promised $10,000. The end of the rainmaker's career was the Great Depression. Charles died on January 12, 1958, without revealing the secret formula for the powder. During his career Hatfield made more than 500 rains.